Since I was 97, that's like years ago, I was introduced to Anique, and that is like a, a Roibos um, products. Okay, it's a, it's a local company that manufactures Roibos tea products. So that's the only thing I've been using for like, that's why it's not Nivea, yeah. it is Roibos. Yeah. As you can see, okay, no wrinkles. Okay, so at the, <laughs> at the end of the day, this product is really, I'm not, I'm not selling it now, I'm like, I'm like a customer really out of because I'm like permanently on antibiotics. I'm not a healthiest, healthiest person in the whole whatever. But anyway, so I can't use any type of products. And this is the only product that is suitable for my the shower gel, for instance, I can use that without like getting like irritated my skin or that type of thing. So it's a very natural product and it's proudly South African as well. So I am really, really, really excited for this day and um, I couldn't believe when they responded to say they will be um, willing to partake in this assignment because this is like you'll see when you, you do see the product you'll see and like oh my word it's a tap company you'll see I'm not going to tell you anything more so um, I want to introduce to you Ms. Sarah Harrington from African Express. Um, it's really fantastic to be here. I've just um, flown up from Cape Town where our business is based, but we're a national business and I'm going to give you some background about the business. I don't have all that many slides, but we have some specific areas of the business where we'd really like your help and I think you are the ideal um, people to do it because firstly you're very clued up in this area. And secondly, you are you put right in our target market, even the guys. Okay, so um, this was really a fantastic opportunity for us to come here and speak to you today. Okay, well, firstly, this is our brand philosophy. Um, essentially, um, that we've developed. Um, we've been in business for with this brand for about ten years. So the, the brand philosophy has evolved as we've gone along. Um, and it's really to produce authentic, effective, affordable products that have two elements to them. They're, they're, very, sci they're very scientific, so they bring all the latest contemporary skincare developments um, to the product. Mm -hmm. But the base is, is the proven efficacy, which is effectiveness of natural plant extracts. So we have our main ingredient is rooibos, which is um, extremely proudly South African. And what's fantastic is that um, co companies, especially skincare companies all around the world, have recently tried to copyright or trademark rooibos in their countries because it's really full of antioxidants. Um, and a lot of research is, is, is showing that it's got amazing benefits, both put on the skin and taken internally in tea and, base, and our department of trade and industry really stepped up for the industry and it is now like champagne in France. It has something called global indicator status which means that unless this, unless this plant is grown in a small area of the Cedarburg Mountains in the Western Cape around Clan William, it can't be called rooibos. So now we have like the monopoly on this product that we um, love and know here in South Africa and then we can like spread to the world and really be part of the value chain of a rural area of South Africa where lots of people depend on this industry. So we're very happy about that. Um, this is our tagline for the brand, skincare inspired by nature. It's not a a natural, natural, organic type product that you would find in a health store. It's as clean as we can possibly make it. Um, it does have some chemical elements in it, but essentially um, it's very much plant-based in its, in its, with plant extracts and vitamins and minerals and things. So you'll see with this particular range, purifying range that, this, that we'd like you to look at, it's supported by baobab extract as well, which is a, like another of our fantastic South African things because it has an extremely calming effect, especially for blemishes. 
So um, this yeah, this business was has done really well. It it start, It's owned by my husband and myself. My husband was an accountant, and he started a cosmetic factory, making private label skincare and gift products for chain stores like Clicks, Pick and Pay. Um, those sort of um, things. We make some other really well-known ranges in our factory. Um, the Earth Friendly range for Woolworths and the Olive uh, range called Olive that's a Clicks um, brand. So we make that and we make lots of other um, products as well. And while we were making, um, we built this fantastic factory, while we were doing that, we decided then to develop our own rooibos brand, which is like our property, so that we could really go with, the, with that. And um, myself, my background, I'm a journalist by training, and so, um, and I, end, I spent six years as the beauty editor at Femina magazine. So I really learned a lot about the beauty industry, and um, while it's not my main passion, because uh, I do a lot of other communication work, I'm the main marketing brand consultant for this brand and I've written all the text for the packaging and the, I work really in the new product development and I really oversee all the marketing efforts which I'm going to um, tell you about. So essentially, our rooibos extract, okay, here you can see the actual leaves of the rooibos um, in a watery solution and it's called bioactive rooibos because it's active at a cell level, okay? And it's sourced, as I said, in the Cedarburg. It, it's called a green extract because what happens with rooibos is they cut it in with big um, kind of those round thi things. I think they're called sides or something. They cut it and they take it and they cut it in the heat of the day in Clan William when it's 40 degrees because that's when the plant is putting out its highest antioxidant levels. And it goes, and it's not fermented like the tea, so it doesn't oxidize and go red. So it keeps this high level of antioxidant, and it goes straight into this plant where they use steam and water to make this fantastic extract. And the extract is organic, certified organic, and it's also um, it's it's used in qu in quite a few products um, around the world, exported around the world and that's basically the extract that we use in our products. Okay, so the main basis for our brand is that it's rich in antioxidants, <coughs> all our products, and that is proven to help skin resist the effects of aging and also environmental damage. Okay, it's got a unique, it's a unique heritage product, product from South Africa, but we use modern formulations, so we do a really good um, balance between the quality of the product and value for money because we want it to be accessible to everybody. It's a mass market, supermarket brand. Um, it's earth friendly. As I said, the extract is organic and fair trade certified. So that means that all the people involved in farming and harvesting and working in the area, um, it's all in um, line with fair trade principles. Um, of fair labor practices and deve community development. The brand is one of the only really big major supermarket brands that's endorsed by Beauty Without Cruelty, um, which it's not tested on animals, um, and nor the ingredients. It's got no microbeads in it. This is like a huge big environmental issue at the moment <coughs> because so many of the scrubs made by the international big companies like Johnson Johnson, L'Oreal, and some others I probably shouldn't name them. But basically, in all these scrubs and also in Too Faced, they use these tiny microscopic plastic beads which go down the bathroom plug and they end up in the sewer systems and the waste treatment works can't filter them out and they end up in the sea eventually. And it's causing like a massive problem because they, they fish eat them and things and then it comes back into the food chain. Plus, it's part of like a huge environmental issue in the, um, in the oceans. And the Americans have just passed a law by, that says by the mid, um, mid next year, all products don't have to have that in. But we're very lucky because for our abrasive material, we use 
um, apricot seed kernels and the rooibos leaves, the actual particles of the rooibos leaves. So it, it's as clean as possible. And we also don't use preservatives that are called parabens because they are derived from the petrol industry. So we've got four ranges briefly for all ages and skin types. Um, you'll see our classic range is, is the cream, and that is really the range we started with. And it has a lot of body products in it as well. Um, and that's our basic range. There, then we have um, even tone, a couple of even tone products that are for, hyper for people who suffer from pigmentation problems. Um, and then we have Advantage, which is our premium range, anti-aging, mainly aimed at much older than you guys, like the 40 pluses. And then we have this purifying range in the blue and gold. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. This is basically aimed at a youth market. Okay. So, um, uh, as I said, okay, African Extracts is an FMCG brand, fast-moving consumer goods. It's sold in all the major pick and pay, checkers, um, clicks, diskim, and independent pharmacies. It's affordably priced. The day creams, okay, are around 60 rand um, a product. And quite in the cleansers and things are all less than that. And then our advantage range goes up to about 150. It's more expensive. Um, we've got showing strong sales growth over 30% per annum. So we're doing really well. And the thing is that the this depressed market conditions are really working in our favor because people are saying they really want a good skincare product but they don't want to pay 400 rand. They can't. And here we offer something that's South African, that's clean, that's effective, that works, and that everyone can afford. And it's in spas, it's, you know, it's everywhere around checkers, wherever people are. And our target for 2016 is to sell 60 million rands worth of the products in this year. So I think at the moment, this year we sold about 48 million rands worth. So it's doing really well, okay? And we, for a small South African company, our competition, our competition are the big L'Oreal, Garnier, Pons, Nivea that you see. Those people, they sell billions worth of, of stuff. And so that our products are the best selling South African range in the supermarkets at the moment as their competition. So we're very proud of how far we've come. <laughs> our budget for marketing, you'll be interested in this, our current marketing strategy, 10% of our turnover, okay? And that uh, is quite a high percentage. Um, so roughly 6 million rand we're going to spend on marketing this year. And I promise you it sounds like a lot, but, I but you, it can go <laughs> like before your eyes. Okay, our focus is on rooibos education, okay, with our hashtag Skin Loves Rooibos. Okay, so that's our strong corporate positioning. We've got a strong um, social media presence on Facebook. We've got more than 40,000 followers. We post every day. We run competitions. We have a very loyal Facebook offering, and we're on Twitter and the others as well, but I mean, quite frankly, I mean, I think we've got about three people on Pinterest, okay? But Instagram is, has been identified, maybe, and we'd like your assistance on this, as something where the youth range, the purifying range can really live through Instagram, because our impression is that Facebook is quite an aging um, thing. Okay, everyone's, once you, people say once your mom's on Facebook, it's time to move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we do tr um, trade marketing, catalog sales, promotion, and events. Um, one of the sad realities of being in supermarkets and things is that supermarkets dictate to you very much, and clicks and disc them, how you spend your marketing budget. So basically, you have to fund all these trade promotions. So every time you see... Um, 20 rand off a product or buy two, get one free or whatever. The store isn't funding that. They bill that back to us, to our marketing budget. So we're paying for that free product that is given away. The supply, so it's nothing, so basically it gets more people into their stores, but they don't actually contribute. The same as all their advertising catalogs and leaflets <coughs> that go out when they have beauty fairs and promotions and things. We have to pay to be in those. 
and, we, and it's a lot, okay? So basically, some of our marketing budget is eaten up through that every year. Then we have what works very really well for Advantage Range when we launched it last year, in-store promoters. That seems to be something that's really worked for us, but we haven't done any of that for purifying. You'll see when I come to the purifying slide. We've just launched our first TV commercial, okay, which we made earlier this year. It's fantastic. We did it ourselves in-house because we couldn't, um, we couldn't afford to have like a huge agency. And we actually used our brand assistant in our office who was a Miss S18 finalist, Chanel Arrow, her name is, who works in Cape Town. And we took her off to the Royals Fields and we made this fantastic ad. And in the next nine weeks, you must look out. It's on all the TV channels. And it's... Um, Mnet DSTV, and we're doing 500 spots over the next nine weeks. And then our advert TV advertising budget will be finished, unless we can sell a lot more product and get some more money together. But we're very excited about that. The first one was on Australian MasterChef on Mnet the other night. So keep a look out for that. Um, and I'll be very interested to see if you see it. Okay, then we do a lot of, we do limited print advertising in magazines, in women's magazines and things, because it's, it's very expensive. Some of them, like Fair Lady, 50,000 rand a page. And we're not sure that that really delivers for, our, for us in terms of the amount of product we have to sell for that. Online display advertising, Google and Facebook. This is a big strategy of ours, is to do, have little banner advertising and to use those, their programs to follow our readers, wherever, our users, wherever they are. And then we've used, we've dabbled a bit with using influencers, celebrities and bloggers. Like for instance, for our Advantage Range Review, we have a partnership with a TV presenter called Leanne Williams from Espresso. Mm -hmm. And she did a video for us using our Advantage products. And we had over 100,000 views on YouTube. So that seems to work for us. So that's something that we would be open to doing more of in purifying. So this is our marketing challenge, okay, with our purifying range. We've done no marketing ever for this range. It's been going about three years. And yet 20% of our sales last year were from this range. So, so people are hearing about it and they're using it. And clearly it's growing and, and people like the product. And so we think there's huge upside growth potential for this brand, okay, this particular range. And as I said earlier, it's got baobab extract and omega-3, um, which to help prevent breakouts. And it's ideal for combination skins, okay. Um, it's, there's, there's a, one of the marketing challenges with it is there's two kinds of markets that we have for this product. The one is youth, people who start, who've got, who are prone to breakouts start using this for the first time. Um, 13 to 25 years, we kind of classify that. And, but then there's other people, people who may be older, um, who have oily skins and, they, and they're concerned about shine because they want like a nice matte look. And the baobab and the rooibos are very good at giving you that. So even if you don't really have... Um, teenage associated skin type problems, that mattifying look is very popular and that's doing very well. So it's mainly women, but some young men as well are using the products because the scrub is great, okay? There's the cleansing wash is fantastic. The moisturizers, non-greasy, it goes in, you can use it after shaving, it's fantastic. Our first presenter, you know, did you hear that tonight? He's using the scrub. Oh, really? <laughs> So that's fantastic. Okay, and it includes all ethnicities. We very, this product is quite strong in the black market, okay? It's, it's probably predominantly black market users of the product, okay? And these are the actives, okay, the, uh, the Baobab, we've talked about that, but it's also got the salicylic acid, which is like, was originally from willow bark extract. It's like a kind of same, similar to aspirin. But that's what all the anti-acne products use, is that <coughs> salicylic acid, because it kind of, it def, it, it's what kind of fixes spots and addresses the inflammation and tightens the pores afterwards and then tries to leave less marks. Okay, so this is what the product looks like. These are the product ranges. If you go to our Facebook page, you'll see 
tons of information about these products, okay? But we've got everything. We've got, we've got the, mo the to toner, okay, the face wash, okay, spot control face wash, a toner, dual action moisturizer, so it's, it's against, it reduces oiliness, and it also helps with blemishes. And then we've got um, a cleansing bar for people who, who like soaps, and this one retails at under 20 rand. And then we have a vanishing cream as well for people who like that really to soak up the oil. It works extremely well. And our best selling product, 25% of all the sales on this range are this fantastic product, which is a three in one. It's a wash, scrub and mask. So you can either just use it as a wash or if you want to give it a good scrub, it's got like the granular um, apricot and, and rooibos in it. And then if you leave, you can put it on your face once or twice a week and you can leave it to dry as a mask and then basically rinse it off. So, and I think we all, in today's modern lifestyle, if you can just have one product to do a whole lot of things, it's far better, you know. I think that's what we're all looking for because then you can spend like two minutes doing this instead of like a whole long complicated thing. What is quite nice and we'd like you guys to look at for in your kind of marketing and sales um, assignment is we've got three new products launching in this range and we'd really like some kind of strategy ideas around how best to market these. So basically there's a spot treatment cream which is going to be in a thin little tube like a, similar to a clearosil product which you can dot onto blemishes. Then a pore clearing scrub which is more for blackheads though we called it, it was supposed to be blackhead scrub, and I said, oh no, we just can't have a product that's called blackhead scrub. Because <laughs> who would want to have that in their bathroom? Like, oh no, she's got blackheads, or, ugh, you know. So it's a pore clearing scrub. And then a dual phase waterproof eye makeup remover. And then we, some fragrance free cleansing wipes that are in like a kind of click thing. You can pull it out, it's got all the plant extracts, you can use those. They're fantastic, fragrance-free as well. And all these products will be under 50 Rand retailing. Oh, water, that's cool. Okay, so these are, so this is kind of to get to the business end of what we say. Okay, so we'd really like three things from you um, students, and essentially I don't really know how you go around dividing this up or how you would tackle this at all. But I've just put here the type of outcomes that we would really like to get out of this from you guys. Okay, the first task is to gain insight into our target audiences. We really want to understand better who's using this product and who we can sell more of it to. Okay, so we'd like to know something about some insight into like the top skincare concerns, um, purchasing habits, pricing, retail preferences, where people prefer to buy these type of products, um, identify our main competitive products. I mean, we kind of know what they are, but, you know, we might, there might be some insight there. Media consumption, the best way to talk to people using Purify. Online broadcast print channels. Okay, where are our, our existing customers and our potential customers that we can really start marketing this purifying rare African extracts purifying range to? And then we'd like to know something about the effect of influencers, okay, celebrities, beauty bloggers, family, friends, and peer groups. I mean, what is it that actually makes people buy? Okay, that's what we'd like. You know, like what are the influences that make you people try a product? Because one of the things that's really, young people are innovators, okay, but weighed against that is the fact that skincare, with skincare, people tend to be very brand loyal. Okay, because they find something that works for them and they stick with it. Even though the industry's moved on and time's moved on and their products may not be so fantastic, but basically they kind of stick to what you know. Whereas, whereas we think that we want to tap into that innovation of, that, that characterizes young people, that short attention span that you want something new, you want something to try. Like, would a sam sampling make you try something? Would um, hearing about it on TV, were, or would, do you want your friends to tell you? Do you want it to, like, hear it on Twitter? What do you really want to do? To what will make you change? Okay? So the impact of sampling and activations. I mean, if we came to a campus like this and did a big 
some kind of activation, what kind of activation would it be, what, what, what would draw people to the product and say, oh yes, give me a sample, I'll try that and I might buy it. Okay, and then what kind of appreciation is there in the youth market for natural earth-friendly positioning? You know, the fact that we've got, um, that it's endorsed by Beauty Without Cruelty, that we've gone out of our way to be um, sustainable and that, you know, we follow these fair trade practices and things. Okay, so that's the first kind of block of information. And then the second is, we would really like, okay, some ideas for us to do a marketing, a mar for a marketing strategy for a campaign that would last six months from July this year to December. And we would like to do, we'd like to raise awareness of the African extracts purifying in our target market, build loyalty through our existing customers, okay, and gain new consumers. Focus on the new products, the three new ones that are coming into the market, because that always gives you something to talk about. And then to like develop a kind of um, through the line strategy and implementation plan, come up with your ideas. And then essentially our budget for doing that over six months would be around a million rand. Okay, so we'd really like you to now go, go wild and come up with some ideas and a strategy so that we could get as much return on investment for that one million rand. Because you know, it's really hard earned in a business like us. It sounds like a big figure, but those are our profits. So we're talking about taking our profits and saying, what can we do with this one million rand that will invest into the future of our business, that will grow purifying, and that will just move it to the next level in terms of this particular range. Okay, and then our third thing, which is more the kind of sales and distribution and side, is we, we're in these big retailers, okay? And we can but we can't really influence people that much once the product is in store on those shelves because it's just with all the other products. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to explore developing new retail forms of retail and, and retail and opportunities, okay? We'd like to take this skincare to our youth customers maybe where they are, okay? Outside of like the normal retail space and we'd like to align with their lifestyles, their skincare needs and their buying habits. And we're looking for opportunities and mechanisms to incentivize sales, okay, and reward um, people who are buying our products and who are loyal to it. We don't have any such kind of mechanism at the moment. We haven't before. And then what kind of like kind of point of sale and activation support and presentations would really be needed to kind of support a new way of selling these products, okay? And I just, but I just want to say one thing, okay? Our current retailers, because we're in stores, in these big retail things, one of the options that is not open to us is having our own on-store, I mean, our own online business, okay? Because that is seen as being in competition to our main retail stores. And they say, after oh, if you're going to go and sell off your website directly to customers, then, you know, why should we invest in giving you more shelf space and... Things. So, so essentially, we kind of, we, we, because we're in that mass market in those, in those stores, we are now prevented from really um, doing much of an online direct business through our website. Okay, so I think it's going to take some, but I, I'm sure there's potential out there to find new ways of of talking about and distributing and getting people to experience these purifying products. We, so we'd like to hear about it. And that's basically it. This is a visual from our TV commercial, so you'll recognize it when you see it. This is our website. Uh, the TV commercial is loaded on our website, so you can go there and have a look at it. It's, it's a 30 second commercial. And um, you'll see there, you'll find out everything that you need to know about the purifying products and about the rooibos extract and about what we've been doing up to now. And um, we're also willing to, um, I'm more than happy um, for Lisma to give you my email address. You can just contact me if you have any specific questions that as you do your assignments, you'd like to find out more. Perfect. Um, so, um, while the is outside, if you 
Okay, I'll tell you what the challenge is. We could sell directly to customers if it was through some, um, for instance, like say we went into, okay, this is just not a really such a great idea, okay, but like say we came up with a strategy to sell in nightclubs, okay, so we could do that. Or if we decided to sell through youth groups, or if we decided to sell through churches, but what we, but what, where we, where our main retailers, like pick and pay and clicks, would come down hard on us if we had a section on our website where we said click here to buy. So you'll see we've got all our products and we've got all the information about it, but you can't buy through the website because we now precluded from doing that. And we even have a factory shop in Cape Town at our factory, and we where we sell all our other products, but we we. It's been made quite clear to us they don't want us to sell a, the products discounted through a factory shop, our factory shop. So essentially, because the retailers think that they're supporting us, and um, so they don't want us to be in direct competition with them. And a lot of them also, like Clicks, for instance, are setting up their own e-commerce site where they'll sell our products, but obviously they'll take the profit margin. Yes. Yeah. So far, there's a lot, but I would really like to purchase it online. Yes, I know. It's easier for me to sell it online. It is. Yes. It is, but unfortunately, that is a barrier for us. So we can't really go down that route. Because I'd love it, then I would just get Uber drivers to deliver it to people. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah. Is the gentleman at the back with a black shirt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since you're saying a bit, like you don't allow other countries to grow those kind of plants. So, like, tell me here, if there's a natural disaster, then where all your plants are flooded, then what will you do? Well, I think that will, that will be a problem. Okay. So I think that we have other um, we have other plant extracts in, but I suppose we'll have to move to honeybush or marula or something. Because, yeah, but you're absolutely right. That is a huge risk to the brand. Um, we, we, if anyone, if, any, if, if there's anyone here from the region, our, you know, the Southern African region or whatever, we're also very keen to expand into our neighboring countries. At the moment, we sell quite a lot in Botswana through the click stores um, but, and Namibia. But, uh, you know, we're also keen to get some um, ideas there. difficult will it be for your company if you were to move away from uh, the retail outlets that you are in contract with so that you can have a lot of freedom for you to advertise and sell your products freely and, and, and in a way that you can expand in more ways and touch base with many customers than they limit you to be in. Is it going to be a problem for you to do that with your company or you feel like you are still safe within the boundaries that they've, they've, they've put you Well, the thing is this, okay, this is like a product like... 
shampoo and yeah, yeah, and, and, and flora and margarine and stuff. Okay, so basically that's how it's marketed. And we have about a hundred people working in our, in our business and what we don't do our own distribution, okay, except to small independent pharmacies, okay. What we do is we deliver, and this is kind of almost the, the beauty of, um, as much as I've complained about um, the huge supermarkets, and, but basically we deliver to their central warehousing, um, their central distribution warehouses. And then they sort out how they get it to every little clicks and pick and pay around the country. So basically, that, that is something that as a, as a small and growing business, the distribution is a huge logistical challenge, okay? Especially in a country like this, where we don't, quite frankly, we don't have a good postal service. It's not reliable and it's not fast, okay? And it's not cost effective. So, so um, essentially in some countries they can get over that because you can put so a box of products in the post and it's there. It's like not, it's, it works. So I don't, I think we're really looking for, like with purifying, complementary ways of, of doing it. Because I mean we've sold nearly 50 million rands worth last year through the supermarket, so I think we're going to stick with that. Hi, I'm very well. How are you? Um, my question is, have you gone We have some distributors quite small in various parts of the world um, and uh, where the business in, from an export point of view has been driven is by, is by expat South Africans. Because they say I love your products and I use them and I know if I go to London there's like, or I'm living in Canada now or I'm in Australia, there are like lots of people here that I'm sure I could sell this to. And so that's how that distribution has built up. You know, um, one of the projects that we're working on as a business is we're developing a completely organic green range that we are going to try and market into the U.S. into their health shops because it's a smaller, more restricted market. Because the difficulty is this, is that we're producing quite a volume. We could ramp, we could double our production, okay, in our facility, and that would obviously create more jobs and things. However, what we can't do is if Walmart came to us overnight and said, oh, we'd like to take you in all the Walmart stores in America, I mean, we actually wouldn't physically be able to produce enough volume of the stuff to, to easily fill an order like that. So it's like a dog chasing a car, and then the dog <coughs> catches the car, and then what? Okay? <laughs> so for markets, for, for companies that are scaling up, that's a very big business challenge, is where do you seek to develop those export markets? But I think there's huge growth potential in Africa, for instance. Okay, final question, you sir. Okay. Um, I want to ask that, it seems like you have a high competition on the product, so that you need to be able to sell the same product, and also explain how you did the product work for the skin. So my question is, do you, do you have, or what is your strongest feature <coughs> or any Make your product that will different, different, different yeah. product for customers. Maybe I am loyal to this other brand. Yes. That will make me switch to my brand and go to your yeah. brand. Yeah, yeah I think that's a very good question because that goes to the heart of, of what we're doing because they can outspend us massively in marketing. Okay? And we say this is that basically from across all our ranges, the differentiating factor is rooibos. Okay, we, we are South Africans and we know rooibos and we know it's good for us and we know it's healthy for us. There's more and more research showing even if that you drink six cups of rooibos a day, how you lower your list, risk of cancer and heart disease and things like that because it strengthens the body's cellular defenses, okay. So, and the skin is the largest organ in the body, okay. So, so that's that's the basic brand proposition, is that 
skin loves rooibos, okay? And that we know rooibos are South Africans and that more and more people in this market will choose to use a product that is associated with health and that they know and that they trust, basically. So the other products can't offer that. That's a, that is kind of what we can offer. Okay, so very, very, I can't tell you really the toner of this one. I'm using the toner of the blue range and the face wash of the red. So I'm very happy about this product because it's a very good quality product and it's like a shade. Yeah. But I just want to say I've got here, I've got a whole suitcase full of products and for you guys to try and basically as leaflets, okay, that you can look at. I just want to say this, okay, because this is very important. I went and got these products out of our, our region, okay? So these products aren't perfect. Okay, they, so basically why they would be in the rejects is because, like this one, because we have like a quality control person, will see that when this tube was sealed, it's not lined up properly. Okay, the, it's, it's slightly off center when it was sealed. Okay, so we can't send that out to the tube, to the tray. Some of them, if you actually put it under stress test and you really squished it, it might pop because Perhaps it's not sealed like absolutely 100%. Or it might have a mark on the, on the packaging from one of the machines. So essentially, so when you look at it, don't look at it and say, uh, oh, this looks, this looks whatever. But I just bought this whole suitcase full. So as many of you as possible can try these, try at least try some of the product and, and see what you think. You know? Okay, um, we will manage that now, please, because it's going to be chaos if we like like right please, maybe I aside. Um, sorry, now it's quite more better. Any, any next time? Um, uh, I think, first of all, thank you very, very much. I think this is like a... Yeah. 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 Yeah.